Hello and welcome. If you're new here and not aware, this channel is to encourage you to get prepared for what's coming. It is to inform you of things I see coming, things in legislation that have been pushed through right beneath your eyes without you knowing, and to share information about basically anything I decide to. I don't show my face because privacy is important, but I promise if you listen to me and watch my videos, you will be more informed than your neighbour, and hopefully you will take actions to get prepared. With that said, I'm not a financial advisor, and you should not take anything I say as financial advice, nor should you consider anything as a call to arms or an excuse to dissent. I do not condone crime or incite action except for preparing lawfully for what is coming. So what should you be doing now then? Well that's relatively simple. Get non-perishable long life foods and try to get to one year worth of food for your family stored away. Next get seeds, plant a garden, grow vegetables that you like to eat, Try to use heirloom seeds where available, but don't neglect some things like potatoes and pumpkin and kumara and quick growing green leafy vegetables. Uh, some things like pak choy are ready in about six weeks. They're essentially Chinese cabbages and germination is pretty much 100%. Uh, so they grow all year round except for when it's far too hot. Next, try to get away to hunt. Uh, if you don't have a gun license, and I know many of you don't, and I know wait times are like a year now for some of them, if you don't, get a bow. You don't need a license to hunt with a bow. Simple as that. Not too bad, nice sight, simple, right? Okay, bear with me here. Okay, if you can't hunt, try to be friends with a local farmer who will sell you whole animals or pre-butchered animals or anything in bulk. That will make a difference. Uh, next, look to your water. Try to get a few weeks supply. Uh, just remember you need sort of four litres per day per person in your house. Um, and then you want to try and find a source of fresh water that you can access that's not on, uh, let's say, private land, you want something public land, um, and then get something that you can carry it in and transport it back to your place and things to purify it if possible. Uh, failing all of that, you can put in a, uh, a rainwater harvesting system from your roof, or you can try and sink a shallow well, which is not a bad option as well. Uh, okay, moving on. Why do you need me to tell you about this? Simply, it's because our media over here is not reporting it. When they do, they try to sugarcoat it and they dismiss it and basically they're just doing a bullshit job. Simple as that. It's not their fault. News Hub is owned by a private international company. Other parts of our media coverage are government funded. Public Interest Journalism Fund, Oak Tree Capital Management and Quadrant Project uh, Quadrant Private Capital and Discovery Incorporated are some of the bigger players. When I was a younger man, uh, I remember attending a course on journalism and having a debate when I was told to write things as if a right-minded thinking member of society who's five years old were the reader. And I thought, why should I have to dumb things down? That's ridiculous, right? Uh, but yeah, essentially our media is deliberately dumbed down, overseas or government funded, manipulated, and all we have in New Zealand is basically nobody to tell you what's really going on. So I'm going to do it. Simple as that. Why is this necessary now? Okay. You're probably all wondering that, I would imagine. What is going on right now around New Zealand and some of the parts, uh, international parts as well? 
Well, firstly, just look around. We have large inflation here in New Zealand. Just before I made the video, it's been reported at 6.9%. Uh, we know that's a bullshit number when vegetables are up about 18%. Fuel is up for diesel for one. Last year it was about a dollar per litre less, which is like a 100% increase. Um, and the rents are up and the house prices are up and essentially everything is up except your wages, right? Or your salary, depending on how well off you are. Simple as that. Um, yeah, but you don't need me to tell you what's going on there. You just need to go to the grocery store and essentially have a look. So we've had reports recently of an upcoming food crisis. And of course they're trying to tell us that it is the war overseas that is to blame for that, right? In the news recently, we've heard from farmers uh, from all types, you know, uh, meat and vegetables, all types essentially, about uh, resource management consents and laws that are stacking unfounded costs upon the top farmers uh, on top of the farmers that are limiting their ability to produce food in the name of conservation. Uh, so that is something that's coming down the line. I wouldn't be surprised if they say, oh, we need a, a climate lockdown next. I don't know how many of you would swallow that. I probably wouldn't. Essentially what's happening is the need for prohibitively expensive resource consents to use water or fertilizer or just to grow vegetables is crazy. There are even export costs on frozen meat too. Certain countries we export to dictate labeling and what antibiotics are to be used in farms on animals that are unwell. Uh, the costs and regulation are designed to limit food production. And when we as a nation export 95% of what we produce, it mostly goes to the USA, Canada and China uh, who are recently unable to meet their export obligations to us but still require we send ours to them, it becomes easier to understand why there may be food shortages on the horizon for us here, even given the fact that we are a majority net exporter of food, honey and wood. Part of this was the Comprehensive Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, which coupled with side letters to prevent the Investor State Dispute Settlement Scheme, which basically means if we don't meet our export targets, we can be sued by multinational corporations and government bodies, at which point we will either become either more indebted to them, or places like China or America, where we have uh, free trade agreements, essentially. Um, Yeah, they'll, they'll, instead of asking for money or extra financial stuff, they can start asking for land to settle these uh, investor state disputes, right? Yes, I know America is not part of the CTPPA, which is the Comprehensive uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. But Canada is, and we've all seen how authoritarian their government has become when it comes to other people's things. Yes, I'm speaking about their freezing of bank accounts and crypto exchange monies of those who don't agree with their politics and policies, i.e. the trucker protest. Uh, our New Zealand government did the same and tried to take money from the parliament protesters here under seizure laws. By the way, those seizure laws did not exist before COVID-19. Interesting. So if you're wanting to read up about that, or any of these things I've just skimmed over, uh, look at mfat.govt.nz, look to the CTPPA, look to the Resource Management Act, uh, search for information about the Investor State Disputes Settlement Clauses and part of the CTPPA, and for the COVID response legislation, which basically uh, outlined our responsibilities through, uh, through COVID and the uh, ongoing supply chain crisis that we're experiencing. Now, that COVID framework and legislation was due to be repealed 
in May of 2023, so it is due to come up. But later on down the agreement, there is a clause that says the minister can extend that as many times as he likes, uh, albeit only for 10 working days at a time, but he can just keep doing that. So, uh, I don't know, I want to ask you something here. Let me ask you, when a government, uh, when has a government, sorry, when a government has increased its power, when has it ever in all of history given it back or appealed its laws? Uh, especially those laws that give it almost limitless authority to impose lockdown, to requisition land, to seize property, to forcibly relocate you off your own land because they want to flood it for future power generation, or if they want to give it to another country to avoid that country coming in and taking it or save 10% rise in national debt, etc. Now to be fair, we signed some side addendums as part of the CTPPA with some countries to limit the investor state dispute settlement clauses in there and our clear and apparent vulnerability to it but this mostly amounted to uh, them promising not to enact it essentially um, in Canada's case uh, they said we promise not to invoke the ISDS on you unless we really really have to but we're not signing anything that lets us out of it or lets you out of it scot-free essentially trust us we're Canadian and in no way controlled by American governments we promise yeah right with China we have a free trade agreement and what people most people don't know is that our free trade agreement with China comes with quotas. For example, if we don't provide X amount of tons of beef or cheese or milk, etc., there'll be large tariffs added to your to our trade. So it's not a free trade agreement. It's really an agreement for us to get their consumer electronics in exchange for our food and lately more of our farms and land as well. Which is worrying. Before we look to end this video, because I'm dragging on and making a total balls up of half of what I'm supposed to be saying, um, I want you to understand that what the first lockdown we had here in New Zealand was really about. I think that's important for you guys to know. So, yeah, we let COVID in and it's running rampant and people are dying up to about 20 a day over here in a small population. Not great, right? Uh, but the first lockdown was so you could get used to not being allowed out of your home. It was so you could get used to not being allowed to go hunting. So you could get used to standing in a line at a supermarket waiting like animals at a race to get through, right? It was essentially behavioral conditioning. It was to test the waters and it was to pass laws under national emergency measures uh, that they'll never repeal and that'll give them more control than they've ever had before. So to summarize, what does this boil down to? Well, basically, we produce a lot of food, but it's not ours to keep because we don't have the military to say no to someone like China or America. Uh, you have to get uh, you have to get used to lining up for food, or not being allowed out to get it at all. You're not allowed to grow food if you have the land to do so for a lot of people because of climate change. You have to pay for these stupid large resource consents, right? Uh, next thing, I reckon they're going to come for your chickens in your backyard farms too. Or mine. Uh, oh, and uh, what else? The media won't tell you because they're owned by overseas and there are laws about telling you things that would cause civil unrest or panic. Even the Official Information Act can be declined information you requested because they think you will tell someone about it and it might cause panic in the population. I actually found that one out firsthand, probably about a dozen years ago. Lastly, we are not immune here. The international influence that dictates our internal public policy is so entrenched that we may as well be the barons under King John trying to ask politely for him to suck to sign Magna Carta. Okay? That is it for today. Look after yourself. Don't let this knowledge cause you any anxiety or mental strain. 
I know it can, but remember, you can only control your actions today, and if you prepare, you have nothing to fear. The straw that broke the camel's back is coming, so just be safe and prepare everyone. Okay, if you got it, if you got this far and you've enjoyed it, even my ballsing up of most of the what I wanted to say, um, don't let it, you know, essentially make you spiral into a whole depression at the travesty of what marks this is a stain in the soul of man. Just give me a like, subscribe, comment share my video and prepare. Simple as that.